seventh grade, I fell asleep in class. And uh, I, I, I'll never forget, I pictured myself like holding this really cool skull and looking at it, like turning it. And uh, I always kept that, that image in my head until uh, I was able to sculpt it, you know, once I had the tools and know-how. And I went through about three generations before I got it to where I knew that that was the one for my dream. This is definitely the first anchor piece, you could say, in the whole Starling Gear saga. So much of what I have started from this version. Um, my whole idea in the beginning was I never wanted to do realistic skulls. I always wanted to do skulls how I saw them in my mind, which were animated, kind of mischievous, up to something. They say artists uh, create in their own vision. <laughs> You know, very rarely serious, and uh, but always up to something. So that's kind of what I, I wanted this skull to be, and uh, it's worked out pretty well. I've always wanted to push the envelope with new metals, new finishes. You know, once I had copper, it wasn't enough to have it high polished, not for long. You know, I have ADD really bad, so, you know, I wanted to, it to look like the Statue of Liberty, and I wanted it to look like, you know, it had been sitting around for a hundred years, and just that fascination with different finishes, different metals, all that stuff. I just wanted to really separate my work from anybody else's in terms of uh, always pushing new, new materials, new things, and some of them didn't work out so well, and some of them worked out great, but it never stops me from continuing to push to the next thing, you know. When silver was only 6.50 an ounce, I used to get questions about, you know, why is this skull ring five or six hundred dollars? How can I justify that? And it's not until when you educate people and bring them into the shop and show them how much really goes into a ring, and you're not just paying for a raw material, like there's a lot of labor, a ton of labor in each piece. Each piece needs to be individually done and then joined together, or like a ring needs to be shot and cleaned and stamped and, you know, invested, cooked, cast, then you cut it, grind it, and then the finishing starts. Sanding, repairing, tumbling, polishing, uh, antiquing, and, you know, finally you get the final product, but you're talking about a lot of steps, you know. It's, it's an educational thing for, for clients, you know, at times. Well, each of my um, showrooms that I've designed, they've always had a kind of a theme. And this one I was a little stumped at until uh, I was walking in Portland, Oregon with some friends through an um, antique shop and I saw this, uh, this section full of old tools. I knew right there, I said, this is it, because it really uh, harkens back to when just about everything in America was made in America. I, I really wanted to capture that old, made in America quality feel that was so important to me, putting this place together. I didn't, there was not one piece that I wanted to go down to the hardware store at a Walmart and, and pick up. You know, everything was sourced from the light switch covers to Edison bulbs and, and, and all the lights. Just to have, there's something about age that does to objects that you just can't fake, you know, that I wanted. I, I wanted that depth to this place. It was really important to me. I want to make pieces that who knows where they'll end up, but I know chances are they're not going to be destroyed. Like a painting can burn up real easy or, you know, termites or fungus or whatever, but something like this is just, I won't say it's forever, but damn near close. And, you know, where is stuff like this going to end up? You know, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated with that right now, but I want to make these iconic pieces at least one or two a year that 
really uh, may end up in a museum one day or in private collections, you know, that would be uh, really highly sought after, you know. I always wanted Starling Gear to be timeless as opposed to trendy. My grams used to tell me, uh, be, be timeless, not trendy. And uh, that, that really means a lot to me now, looking at you know, where I'm at and where I'm going, because I definitely want Starlinger to be a bit more timeless as opposed to dying off like all trends do. I prefer just to kind of keep my pace and keep on going.